Sup guys, Hey King here, bringing you a movie review. I just got back from seeing Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Marvel's newest MCU film, and I believe the second movie in Phase 4. So yeah, we've had WandaVision, we've had Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we've had Loki, and now we got What If, and we already had our first MCU movie in Phase 4, Black Widow. So far, so good. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. How does it hold up? Pretty good, actually, for an origin story. So, for those of you who don't know, this movie explores uh, the character of the Mandarin, the real Mandarin, okay? And his organization called the Ten Rings, which have been around in the MCU since the very first Iron Man movie and sort of hinted at with the second film. And then in the third one, it looked like we were finally getting... The Mandarin, the proper Mandarin, or at least a realistic version of him played by Ben Kingsley, and that didn't pan out. Uh, the movie decided to pull a last minute twist for the sake of a twist halfway through, and pretty much slapped every fan who liked the character in the face. And yeah, that movie... That movie did not do well uh, when it came to, when it came to that character. Like they really dropped the ball hard on that. And since then, it's been a good few years now, sort of us waiting to see whether they were gonna use the character or not, if they were gonna give us the real version. Because if all of you have seen uh, the uh, Marvel short sh film, is it short film? No, the one shot. The one shot. I think that came with for the Dark World, uh, all hail the king. It is revealed in that that yeah, there is a real Mandarin out there, and yeah. So we've been waiting to see the real Mandarin, and here he is, finally, played by Tony Leong. Uh, I believe this is his first uh, proper Hollywood movie that he's doing, which is great. Like, for an actor of his caliber to, you know, choose to do this kind of film, that says a lot about where the MCU is now in, at this point. Like, the fact that you've got actors now coming in and wanting to do these kind of roles, and that's great to see. But yeah, this movie isn't called The Mandarin and the Legend of the Ten Rings, it's called Chang chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And yeah, as you can guess that it's about the character called Shang-Chi, played by Sumi Lua, am I saying his name right? Um, pretty good actor, I think, uh, from what I saw in the film, pretty good. Seemed very, what's the word, uh, kind of cliche and typical in terms of it's a character who ran away from home, wants to run away from his past, gets called back into it and has to sort of confront and face his dad. Uh, we've seen a lot of movies in the MCU now when it comes to like family feuds. But this is one of those times where, like, the family feud is very emotional. Uh, especially because uh, they take the time to develop the, can the you know, the character of the Mandarin. And, and that's not his really, that's not his real name. His real name is Wuan, I believe. Um, and, yeah, they do, they do, they, they turn a character that many may have felt was sort of two-dimensional. And they turn him to this very three-dimensional, very emotional, tragic figure actually i mean yeah he does start off as a bad guy he is he is a warlord yes we do get that entire backstory uh but then he finds love and that sort of changes him and then throughout the rest of the film we do get flashbacks that sort of dive into what happened in that time period where he was happy where he had a family that he was raising he had a good wife he had a kid you know son and daughter and he left that old life of his behind and then he sort of gets dragged back into it because of a certain tragedy and they managed to take this character and yeah make you really film for him and it's really it's it's all thanks to tony leong's performance he makes you feel for this character this is one of those times where you know the the villain doesn't even feel like the villain like he is an antagonist he is an antagonist but i wouldn't go as far to say that he is the real villain of the movie there's a lot of yin and yang when it comes to this movie and i gotta say they weigh they incorporated this whole sort of Asian American style into this movie is great. It makes it feel very unique and different to a lot of other MCU movies. Like I really gotta say, when a lot of people like say, "Oh, this this doesn't feel like the MCU," most of the time it's just like them just saying stuff. Like you know, they're just you know just saying it for the sake of saying it. But this is one of those cases where I'm watching this movie and I'm like, at times, at times, it feels like I'm not even watching an MCU movie. It feels like I'm watching. It feels like I'm watching like a modern. Sorry about that. It feels like I'm watching like a modern version of Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon with a bit of like live action anime merged into it. I gotta say like the, yeah, that's really what it feels like, which is cool actually. Like I sat there with a giddy face watching a lot of this stuff happening, but it does like, it does, it does sort of come out of uh, nowhere because the, the first half of this movie does take place in sort of like the real world. So there's a lot of like, real world elements to it obviously besides the fact that you know at one point in the movie they go to like a fight tournament and you, you see the abomination fighting wong so you got a bit of magic here and there 
and then of course obviously the hand to hand combat is is out of this world like this is one of the best MCU action movies when it comes to just hand to hand combat it's great it's it's up there with it's up there with the best of hand to hand uh you know fight movies like obviously this is a Disney movie slash family film so they can't get too violent but what you get is pretty freaking cool like you get this very you get this awesome sort of opening sequence with uh Wuan versus uh you know the woman that he ends up falling in love with Shang Chi's mom and yeah, I definitely got crouching, uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon elements from that fight sequence. And as the movie goes on, you get like you get the bus sequence, which is like the first major action scene of the film, and it happens very early on as well with uh, Shang Chi versus Razor Fist and some ten uh, ring goons, and it's pretty bloody cool. Like uh, you, you see, uh, you see the way he moves and the way he dodges the attacks and the way he deflects, the way he counters it, from him like hopping out of the bus, running on the rooftop. It's it's stuff you don't usually see in the mcu and the way it's handled here is very fast and very smooth okay this isn't the kind of uh fight hand-to-hand -hand fight scene movie you see like you would see in born for example this is very you know camera is there it's following the action there's no fast cards no hard edits you know that 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 they went up to the point where you can't follow the action you can follow the action pretty well actually yeah and it's it's awesome and then, of course, we got some other characters in this movie. I think, uh, what's her name? Uh, Aquafina's in this film. And a lot of people would probably find her annoying, but I thought she was fine. She played the character of Katie and her and, and sh you know, Shang or Sean, if you will. They're, they're good friends. They're best friends. They've been best friends since they were kids. And I gotta say, this is one of those uh, MCU films, or just, like, movies in general, where, you know, you, you'd assume that they would become a couple, that they would get together at the end and they would kiss. That doesn't happen. These are very good friends that's what it is that's what it amounts to and that is awesome to see i like that they didn't go into that typical cliche direction where it's like i love you i love you too and just smooching all the time no that doesn't happen which is great you know it's a nice platonic relationship and they do it well enough and then of course you got uh shang's sister jiong jiong i don't know how to say her name but she was pretty cool she was fun as well she gets a good she gets a lot of cool moments in this movie as well she gets a lot of cool action sequences you got michelle yon brilliant as always as you expect she shines in this film she gets her moments and then of course you got some of the other villains in the background you know obviously you've got the you got uh, the mandarin as the you know the again i can't really call him a villain this is one of those times where a movie took a character and they they went into a certain direction that you wouldn't expect and I can't call him a villain. Like, yes, he is an artistic, but he's not a villain. Like, uh, this is a character of motives that you understand, that you can relate to. And, yeah, at times you really do feel sad and emotional for this guy. And he just sells it. Like, even without dialogue, just the way he looks and the way he acts with just his facial performance. Like, he sells he sells it. And it's great to see that. And, yeah, like I said, you've got him. you got the henchmen's Razor Fist and Death Dealer. Razor Fist, uh, yeah, yeah. he's just sort of there. He's the big macho man. And then you got Death Dealer, who's who's just sort of in the background. He gets one cool fight scene, like I think uh, just before the halfway point of the movie, he gets this really one cool fight scene with Shang. Amazing, again, amazing cinematography and amazing choreography. Like again, the fight scenes in this movie are bloody awesome. <laughs> okay, if you're into films like The Raid, for example, this comes as close as it can uh, without the R-ratedness, if you will. Like again, this is PG-13, but like the way they do it is just like. It's like uh it's awesome okay like if you love like like asian movies and it's just like hand-to-hand -hand asian kind of films this delivers on that part but it's the second half of the movie that might put a lot of people off like i said the first half is very real based the second half is very fantasy very anime inspired um, which I imagine some people will love and some people will hate. Personally, I thought it was it was a bit weird how the tone of the movie just sort of really shifted. Like one minute and the next minute it's like this. And and throughout the movie they do give you they do give you like explanations and hints like this is where the movie's gonna go. But when it gets to that point, it's it's amazing actually how when you watch the trailers, the trailers do not spoil the majority of the third act like there's a lot of story in this film that happens you know with the you know between family between a brother and sister and their dad and their mom that the trailers have not spoiled okay and it's one of those rare times where at the same time while the trailers have done a good job of not spoiling the movie they've also done a terrible job of selling what this movie is really about and yeah it's gonna be one of those cases where you go in and you'll probably be very surprised what direction this film goes in because the second half of this movie is just it's, it's insane 
But in, in, again, it could, it's in a good way and a bad way. Maybe maybe you're going to be one of those people that doesn't like it. So you got you kind of have to prepare yourself when you go into this. When I said that this feels like a live action anime, that whole second half feels like a live action anime. At times, I felt like I was watching something out of, uh, like out of Naruto or, or One Piece or even Spirited Away. I mean. If you've seen the trailers, you know. You've seen the trailers, you know. We got a dragon in this movie. We got a dragon in this film. And it's awesome, okay? I gotta say, it's so rare to see a movie that uses, like, mythological creatures. And uh, obviously, you've got, like, the, uh, you know, the, like, the Chinese-inspired mythological lions. And then, of course, you've got the Chinese-inspired dragon. And I gotta say, the design of the dragon, or the great protector, as it's called in this movie, is awesome. Like, this isn't a uh, Fing Fang Fu, as you like to call it. No, no, no. This is this is a mystical, mythical Chinese dragon. And it's awesome how they animated this and did the design for it. It's great. It's great to see. Because a lot of movies, you see the typical British, uh, American, or, or English-style dragon. You know, the, the, the bat-style dragon. Or the dragon with the four legs and the giant wings on the back. That's, that's the kind of dragon you usually see in a lot of these medias. But with Chang Chi, it's like no, we're going, we're going full on Asian inspired, and this entire movie just has this whole Asian style to it. That's just great to see. It, it is, it is MCU's uh, Asian style crouching tiger hidden dragon sort of movie, and I loved it for that. So guys, as as I was saying, there's a, there's a there's a few flaws in this movie, and like I said, a lot of movies have flaws. Every film has flaws, and this this is no exception. You know, there's a lot of great moments in this, but there are certain things that did kind of annoy me. When it comes to like some of the supporting cast or some of the villains, really, uh, they don't get a lot of screen time or even lines of dialogue or any development whatsoever. Death Dealer is one example. He looks cool and he's clearly supposed to be Shang's childhood teacher, but you never really see it besides like one scene where he's just sort of in the background. And throughout the movie, he's again, he's just sort of in the background. He gets one cool sequence with him, like I said. And then after that, he's just sort of there. Okay, he never really gets any development. I don't even think he gets named, so it's a bit weird. Same with Razor Fist. He does get a few moments, obviously, he's sort of there in the beginning of the movie and throughout the end. But, again, that's one of those characters where it's like, mm, you know, you could have taken the time to sort of give us more of these characters. But the characters that it needs to develop, that it needs to focus on, mainly, you know, Shang, uh, Wuan, uh, the sister, you know, that family dynamic, it focuses on that considerably and it does it really well. Like I said, this is one of those times where the whole family dynamic is very unique and important and central to the plot of this movie. And they do a good job of that. Um other characters there are other characters in this obviously like i said abomination and wong are in this but they're just sort of like like cameos okay they're not in the movie very long wong has a bit of more to do in this but uh, i won't go into detail like in terms of what what he does but again he is just essentially a cameo and abomination by the way the design of the abomination looks bloody great like uh, they they've gone with the more accurate style of the comic book with a mix of what he looked like in the incredible hulk and for the most part it works really well and what they do with him even though it's like like only a few seconds long you kind of get the idea that this is a very different character from the one that we had in the incredible hulk all those years ago like he feels very different this isn't it doesn't feel like the same character actually which is a bit weird um which I'm, I'm curious if they're going to explain that in the She-Hulk show because he's supposed to appear in that. So I'm, I'm curious to wonder what changed because uh, the Abomination in The Incredible Hulk was was a, a lunatic. Like he was crazy. He went, he, went, he went nuts and he started killing innocent people. And that here it's like that, that glimpse you get. It looks like he's a lot more chill and he might be a good guy. I, I don't know what they're going for here, but uh, I'm interested. I'm interested. But it's one of those cases where it looks like they brought something back. And they've improved it, but at the same time, it's like they're going in a different direction, and that might, you know, be a pet peeve for a lot of people. But I'm interested to see what they do with it. I am interested to see, but at the same time, it's like, dude, you're a villain. Like, you're a hardcore villain. Now you're like chill and good. Like, what happened? <laughs> like, uh, again, things happening off screen that they don't explain, and it's it, it is sad to see that. Other characters, of course, uh, I don't know if I should say this, but uh, at, at this point, it is it is confirmed, actually. It is confirmed. I think even the producers confirmed that even the actor has confirmed that they're in this movie. But again, if you've seen Iron Man 3 and if, you, if you've seen All Hail the King one shot, you know exactly what character is going to show up in this. And I was hoping that they would actually bring this character back. And they did. And he's, he's pretty funny. Maybe not as funny as he was in Iron Man 3 and All Hail the King, but he, he, he's still funny because... 
Ben Kingsley, man, like he he sells it. He sells he sells that comedic role. And yeah, he is back as Trevor Slattery in this movie. Um, and surprisingly, he is like a big support character. Like again, he's here and there. He's here and there throughout the second half of the film. And he plays like one important role, I think, and that's about it. But other than that, it was just great seeing him. It's great to see that tie back to Iron Man 3 because Iron Man 3 did cause a lot of the problems uh, that we had when it came to the Mandarin's character and the Ten Rings. And this movie sort of comes out and what it does is it's rectify a lot of those so-called mistakes. And now, you know, watching this, I'm able to look back at Iron Man 3 and sort of appreciate it for what it did now. Like, without, without what they did with that movie and All Hail the King, we wouldn't have technically got in this film i think so you know cool i'm able to look at that movie now and be like okay it, it's 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 good it isn't that terrible now as it back was i mean i still don't like the twist but what they did with the mandarin here is a lot better than what they would have done with him had they stuck with the you know the ben kingsley version of the mandarin here it's just like i said he feels like a proper character like he has a beginning middle and end and that's cool to see the visual effects, as I said, some of the visual effects in this are really, really freaking cool. But the second half does go overboard with it. I mean, you've got a freaking giant uh, mystical dragon in the in the second half. And while it looks cool, there are a few scenes where it does look iffy when when you've got like uh, characters sort of riding it. And uh, you can tell it's green screen and CGI. And of course, there's some other creatures in this movie as well that range from okay to whoa, that's freaking awesome. And then it's sort of done and like, oh, they could have done more of that. Which brings me to, um, and I don't want to spoil this, but I will say this, right? I will say this without spoiling a big time. But like like I said, the Mandarin doesn't feel like a villain, okay? Wuan doesn't feel like a villain. That's because he's, like I said, he's not really a villain. He's an antagonist, yes, but he is not the villain of the movie. There is a villain in this movie. And God, I wish they'd done a much better job developing this specific character. I think for a lot of fans, like hardcore fans, they're going to love this because they wouldn't have expected to see this kind of character in a film like this. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, uh, we're going in that direction then. I didn't think this movie would go in that, but okay, I'm all for it. But they don't really do anything cool. Like, it looks cool. The villain, you know, the villain that they have in this movie looks cool, but... I would have preferred a lot more development. I would have preferred, like, maybe a voice. It's, it's, it feels like, uh, you know what? Even, even like, I was going to compare it to Starro the Conqueror from the Suicide Squad movie that we got. But at least Starro had, like, one or two lines of dialogue that sort of made you understand the character. Here, you've got this villain here, and it's like, it's just here to destroy the world. And fair enough. Okay, fine. It's one of those cases where, like, I wish they'd done a better job with that. Um, at least turning that into some sort of big character like evil like uh examples of like big threatening characters that are done well i'd say vatu from legend of korra even though season two of or book two of korra a lot of people look down on you know that, that's a case of you know we have this big evil spiritual monster but it's talking there's dialogue there and you get where he's coming from you get what he, it's all about here it's like cgi monster number 10 <laughs> Uh, no dialogue, whatever. Just, just you know, do your thing, and that's it. It's like, oh man, you could have done a much better job of that. Like, you could have done a much better job of foreshadowing it and building it up. But uh, again, that brings me to the whole yin and yang of this movie. You've got like the light, you've got the darkness, you've got the pr great protector that sort of represents the that rep literally represents the light, and you've got this thing. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Demon bat, whatever it is. I don't know. Like that represents the dark. You know, Shing and his dad. But like. Obviously, there's there's higher evil, and then there's like good and bad, and you know that sort of needs to come together to create that balance, really. And yeah, how they do that, how they do the theme of that, that's really done well. Like I said, when it comes to the hand to hand fight scenes, it's great. But especially, and I didn't even say this before, the ten rings themselves, the 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 way that you know the ones that are inspired by the uh, iron bracelets or the iron rings in Chinese mythology, or I think kung fu in general. I think you might have seen them in kung fu hustle as well because they are used in that. But the way the ten rings are used in this movie is so much better than what I thought they would be like compared to like having him just wear these 10 little rings that shoot out lasers. No, these things are freaking awesome. They go from like being whips to shields to freaking projectile weapons to being being footholds for Christ's sake or or handhelds. Like the way they the way they manage to create these action sequences around these specific like objects of power, like it's done so bloody well. The visuals for these are great. 
and the way they're neutralized is great. Like I wanted to see more of these things. I wanted to see more of these in action, which is why I'm 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 very interested to see what they do with Shang Chi going forward because I'm really interested uh, to see how he will neutralize these rings in the future. Which oh yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah, he does get the rings, which is a big major theme of this movie of him overcoming the shadow of his dad and gaining these rings for himself. That is a big theme of the film, and they set that up from the very beginning. That you know one day he's gonna have to inherit these wings and they're gonna come to him but the way they come to him is is very emotional done very well which again brings me up to why this movie is one of those good maybe even great mcu films but but obviously that whole lot second half or te technically the final battle could have been done better uh but when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one fights uh, when it comes to, like, uh, the, the sister kicking ass, or Aquafina getting her moment and sort of developing as a character besides just being, like, uh, the, the comedic relief, uh, it's done really well. When it comes to those specific characters, they get their moments to shine, and they do develop, and it's awesome to see, which makes this movie a lot of fun. So, yeah, besides some dodgy CGI and some uh, meh character, oh, no character development for certain characters... This is a pretty fun bloody film, and I do want to watch this again, and I do want to get this on Blu-ray when it comes up, because, yeah, it's good. As for the uh, mid-credit and end-credit scenes, do stick around, do stick around. This is actually one of the longest mid-credit scenes that we've gotten in the MCU by far, and I don't know what it sets up, I don't know what it what it's for, but uh, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to sit down and theorize what it is, and the characters that cameo in this movie are pretty cool, and the end credit scene is a nice sort of like, oh, they're going, they're doing that, because I've never seen the MCU sort of do that, because usually you get the whole, you know, this character will return, what they do here with it is, is a bit more different, and it's like, oh, we're going to see more of this, awesome, I can't wait, and yeah, overall, freaking, freaking great film, I think, I, I think I'll give this a good, just, just because the performances of, of, of Tony Luong and Sima Lu were really great and the hand-to-hand -hand fighting and the action and just the fine family dynamic that they had makes me want to give this movie a good uh, 8 out of 10. Yeah, I did have fun with this. This is one of the best action MCU movies to date. I had a lot of fun. I can't wait to see The Eternals now and I can't wait to see Spider-Man when it comes out. And yeah, I'm curious to see what the future holds for these characters. Yeah, definitely go and see it if you haven't. And obviously... If, you're, if you've seen the other Marvel films and you're sort of hesitant to see this because you don't know what it's going to deliver, I'd say give it a go. Give it a go. If you want some good hand-to-hand -hand kung fu martial arts action, this movie delivers in, in, in that regard. So, yeah, definitely give it a, a, a go, a view, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, hope you like my review on that. As always, remember to like and subscribe, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care, and bye. Should be like this, technically. Not this. This is Wakanda forever. This, this, this suits the style of Shang-Chi more.